the Saudi League executive hinting at PGA Tour crossover events to the fans absolutely hating the idea on social media, Live Golf Boss proposes the opportunity to cross-pollinate with PGA Tour, and no one saw it coming from a mile away. After all, the league and the tour haven't exactly seen eye to eye over the past couple of years. In fact, this feud's actually been really nasty. With Liv filing an antitrust lawsuit against the tour and the PGA claiming that it was the breakaway league that made their players breach their contracts, the point is, they're not even close to being acquaintances, let alone friends. So everyone was extremely surprised when the Live boss said they're thinking about a crossover event with the tour. This went down at the Live Golf event in Washington, D.C., where this mysterious executive stepped up to address the players and said some fascinating stuff. For instance, he started off by saying that there's always room for more teams in the league, and they're exploring that option going into future seasons too. Although, that's not very surprising when you consider that the league's CEO, Greg Norman, has also said similar things in the past. In fact, he's gone as far as to say that they could even run a tiered league system like the Premier League or something, where teams would get relegated or earn promotion based on their performances. Now that would open up a lot of space for some extra players and franchises. Besides, Norman's always looking to sign players from the PGA Tour. But that wasn't the big news of the day from the Live executive, because everyone's ears perked up when he said there's an opportunity to have a crossover event with an all-star PGA Tour team. Wait, what? Yes, he actually wants to allow PGA Tour players into Live Golf only so they could test their medal against the league's best. Of course, this has been a hotly debated topic for quite some time because even though most Live members are former tour pros, many people still like to think they're washed up and can't compete against the PGA players anymore. Let's take a step back for a second though, because the question is, how would they even choose an all-star PGA Tour team? Well, technically, you could just pick the top players from the world golf rankings or something similar, but the Live executive did have a potential solution to this too. He said that we could choose the top four players based on their FedEx cut points, or even the top four players from an event like the Players' Championship. And yeah, choosing people would arguably be the easiest part of this process. Well, unless the players start objecting to it, because truth be told, many PGA Tour members aren't too fond of live golf. I mean, people like Rory McIlroy have built a reputation for being Saudi League haters, so I'm not sure they'd be up for a collaborative event. But again, that's not even the first hurdle they're gonna have to face because it's not like the PGA's leadership likes live golf either. In fact, if anything, they're repulsed by the league's idea and everything it represents, and would rather have it crash and burn than flourish with its crossover event. PGA Tour's commissioner, Jay Monahan, for instance, says that there's only room for one major tour in North America, and it won't be Live Golf. The dude has rejected the idea of ever talking to the Saudi League multiple times, and Greg Normans confirmed this too because he says he's been trying to reach out and come up with a solution for months at this point. So what could actually sway the PGA Tour's opinion and make them cooperate? Well, the tour could actually be forced into it. Yeah, I know, that's a wild concept because who could ever force the PGA Tour into anything? But the truth is, pressure has been piling on them to cooperate and maybe rethink their connection with Live Golf. After all, their claims about the Saudi League players being washed up or not good enough have been utterly destroyed in 2023, with Brooks Kopka winning the PGA Championship and multiple Live members finishing in some very high positions in major championships. Oh, and they can't use the popularity argument either anymore because Liv's event in Australia proved that they're here to stay and people do actually love their format. So now, in every single event we have where golfers from both entities are competing, everyone's hyper-focused on the fact that Liv golf members are competitive and they do deserve to rank alongside the top PGA stars. 
I'm still not sure whether that's actually going to make any tangible difference or not, but what it has done is give Liv a leg to stand on because they've got an argument that this crossover event could be good for the sport. Besides, who knows, even if these two absolutely despise each other, maybe they'll come together if it's a charity event or something. I mean, no one hates charity, right? Oh, and then there's another concern about this crossover event, because as I've mentioned before, the PGA Tour still thinks Live Golf will evaporate into thin air within the next two years. Plus, there was that leaked report called Project Wedge that basically said the league doesn't make any money, and that's a major cause for concern for investors. After all, they've put around $2 billion into the circuit already, so they'd like to see some return on their investment by 2026. But again, we've already seen some strong forward momentum from them, and there's nothing that actually suggests any of that will happen. As a matter of fact, the Live boss even addressed these concerns during his speech in DC, saying that they're not actually thinking about revenue at all at this stage. Instead, they knew that this was always going to be an uphill battle against established tours like the PGA, plus getting something so ambitious off the ground takes a serious amount of work and money. So for him, the upstart circuit was always going to take time to mature and make a space for itself within the mainstream golfing communities. That doesn't necessarily mean that zero progress is okay, but the fact that they've been improving over time and expanding their horizons with new teams and events means they're moving in the right direction. And as far as the future is concerned, he thinks the potential is limitless, and the league is going to become commercially viable eventually. So what does the future look like where a limitless Live and a strong PGA Tour decide to collaborate? Well, the Live boss thinks the sport can become a real powerhouse. He wants the powers that be within golf to come together and end this animosity between the two circuits. Because for him, when you pair historic levels of investment from Live with the PGA Tour's legacy, you get something truly special. As a matter of fact, he's even ready to sit down at the table and start discussing potential routes with the PGA's leaders. Which, to be fair, isn't far from what Norman's been trying. The only difference here is that Greg's arguably burned all the bridges that led to people like Jay Monahan. So who knows, maybe we'll see some other executive take the reins here and guide the league into a new era. That being said, the unnamed executive still thinks it's gonna need some really wise heads to sit together and map this whole thing out, because if they keep doing what they've been doing for the past two years, they're not going to make any progress. Besides, Liv has fulfilled its promise of reaching a younger audience, since 65% of its attendees at the Adelaide event were under 45, so the tour could potentially see an opportunity here. You know, to tap into a new market and capitalize on this mutually beneficial partnership. Although while it all sounds great on paper, especially for the golfers and the leadership, the fans are not on board with the idea of a crossover. In fact, as soon as the news broke on social media, golf fans came out in droves to dismiss the idea and express just how stupid it was. Well, some people don't even believe it's gonna happen, because how could Liv and PGA ever be friends? But even those that do believe the Liv boss say that they'd rather not see this happening because they think Liv has damaged golf by its association with the Saudi Crown Prince and all the controversy that he brings with him. What's more, another user thinks that the Breakaway League is flattering itself by claiming it's as big as the PGA Tour. I mean, who are we kidding here? Why would Jay Monahan, after all those months of talking trash and dissing the league, change his stance and collaborate with them again? And yeah, there were obviously those people who think we've already got crossover events between these two. They're called major championships. So there you have it, from the fans absolutely hating the idea on social media, to the Saudi League executive hinting at PGA Tour crossover events, that's how Live Golf Boss proposed the opportunity to cross-pollinate with PGA Tour.